Good morning everyone. Let's continue with the exploration of Siddha Rameshwar Maharaj's teachings. Here's the first one. Anxiety accompanies desire. As long as the mind is full of desire, anxiety will be there. When desire ceases, anxiety is no more. While walking on the street, many things are visible, yet we have no attachment to them. However, once the sense of mine is conceived, desire arises and one immediately becomes preoccupied with objects. To feel that something is mine is itself bondage. What is truly ours in the physical body? For the body, the air that comes inside goes out and the air outside comes in. Consider all to be your friends, so that there is no duality or dislike in the mind. When you repeat the statement that all is Brahman, then why does your attitude not change accordingly? This is because your thinking is warped by the notions of virtue and vice and you adopt a critical or dualistic attitude. Now Maharaj goes further here. One who pleases you is considered a good person and the other you consider as bad. However, are there not many others who call that so-called bad person as good? Moreover, to what extent are you yourself good? Are there not some people who take you to be a bad person? The wise man says that since all are slaves of circumstances, and living according to the destiny of the body, how can we differentiate between good and bad people? You see, this is what Ramesh ji would say all the time. If we have this deep understanding that nobody truly does anything, because whatever they do is based on their genetics and conditioning, over neither of which did they have any control whatsoever, it is truly not their doing. So there is really nothing as a bad person or a villain in your life anymore. It's quite astonishing. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of something quite funny I must share with you. I was visiting this health club for many years and there was one fellow who uh, I would say had this talent of rubbing people the wrong way, you know, and uh, nice chap, nice chap. And so he started picking on me once in a while because I was new at the time. And, you know, he would uh, use foul language, but I knew that deep down he was also kind of having fun. It wasn't anything beyond... Uh, beyond just a play of words and, you know, that kind of ribbing that goes on amongst guys. So we were in the locker room one day and uh, he said something as usual, you know, and of course the audience is always there because the other guys are there. And immediately he said something nasty to me and my reply was, I love you too. And the whole locker room burst out laughing, you know, including him. And it's so peculiar because 
one day when we were in the gym and he was walking past there was another guy around or something and uh, he was talking to the other guy and suddenly he looked at me and out of the blue completely unasked unwarranted he told that guy he said i'm warning you if you get too close to gautam or do anything then you'll have to deal with me and he walked off and that guy was shocked because he didn't even <laughs> say anything he was probably just two three feet away but that is how it is you see what i understood is that there are truly no bad people there are truly no villains and uh, you kind of um it nothing really bothers you or shakes you in terms of people saying things to you you know i think it is it was the madho or shri orbindo i mean their teachings are the same and they are one voice who said that you know a, a good test is to see if you tremble like a leaf if someone says something or something happens you know so yes that is basically what happens this need to react to someone who says something which is not pleasant kind of drops away because it's just seen as part of who they are rather than anything to do with you so in this light let us read on siddharameshwar ji says consider the one who criticizes you or blames you as a kind person keep an open loving attitude towards those who give you a lot of trouble and remain without enmity only then you will be brahman then he says prostrate before him who hates you if you decide that someone is bad then you yourself become bad one who has no enmity is himself brahman so simple now on a separate note he says if that which is seen is unreal why do we see it with eyes understand it to be unreal because we see it with eyes take it for granted that all the things that are seen by our eyes are false they are unreal the self who is invisible is the only reality you see this is what is meant by the world is an appearance in consciousness and how real is it it if it disappears in deep sleep that is how real it is but of course in the waking state it is as real as it can be that is the maya that is the illusion so what siddharameshwar ji is constantly pointing at is objects in manifestation are not the reality it is the consciousness within which the objects arise in fact consciousness takes the shape of those objects you see that consciousness or if we cross the generations of the lineage and look at maharajas abiding in the being the sense of i am and so on and so forth you see that is what is being constantly pointed to because when we take objects for real we derive a sense of self from them and this can be another exploration in fact eckhart tolle the author of a new earth has explained this process beautifully about how we derive a sense of self from objects and those objects need not be just physical objects but even thought forms whatever we identify with
again on a different note siddharameshwar ji says somebody falls at my feet all right he did it to the feet how am i concerned with it somebody walks awkwardly or behaves strangely let him do so how am i concerned with it we may only watch i love this sentence we may only watch you see because then we are no longer circling back to the me this is what siddharameshwar ji is pointing at what does it and how does it concern you even when people were falling at his feet prostrating at his feet he was clear if he is not the body there is no question of them touching my feet that is what he is trying to say there is no question of any pride or arrogance of playing the role of the guru we may only watch friends i hope you enjoyed this podcast and more next time thank you